This is Classical Conversations with WGTE. I'm Mary Claire Murphy, and it is my pleasure to introduce our guest today, Bion Sang, who is an acclaimed and internationally acclaimed cellist. He also has a new album that's out right now, so you can check out his latest work when you look up Cantabile with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra and conductor Scott Yu. So, Bion Sang, thank you so much for calling in today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, Mary Claire. So you are currently living in Texas, is that right? Correct, Austin, Texas. Yes, very hot <laughs> Texas right now. <laughs> I believe it. Is that where you grew, grew up too? Uh, no, I grew up in, in, in the Northeast. Um, I was actually born um, in Lansing, Michigan, uh, but my dad got a job with IBM when I was only six weeks old. And so that, uh, you know, it was in Poughkeepsie, which is the, the home of IBM. That's where I grew up, Poughkeepsie, New York. and then spent college and, and graduate school and then actually the first part of my my uh, um, career uh, uh, freelancing out of New York City so um, I, I, it wasn't until 2002 that um, I got the job at UT teaching at, at UT music um, professor, cello professor there and, and so I've been there ever since got it okay well WGTE is in Toledo Ohio so it's always fun to hear from a uh, musician uh, born in the Great Lakes region. Yes. And when did you make your cello debut? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, the officially how, how <laughs> it's put on my bio was when I was 11 um, with the New York Philharmonic. Um, Zubin Mehta was conducting. Um, I played uh, the Boccherini Cello Concerto. Um, but at my first concert with um, orchestra was actually, um, I think I was nine. Um, it was at the Lake Plas with the Lake Plas Um And uh, in fact, it was no, no, it was, it was not the Balcarini. It was the uh, Johann Christian Bach cello concerto. Yeah. Wow. So either way, nine or 11, you were just a youngster. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long had you been playing at that point? <laughs> um, I started when I was seven. Um, and, and it was, yeah, it was a blur, you know, I, I don't remember all that much from, from that period. Um, I, I, I mean, I remember my, I remember bits and pieces. Like I remember my, one of my, I think my, it was my very first cello lesson. I remember, um, playing open strings. That was still, was just it. It was just playing open strings. And, um, it's, I, it's funny because I remember that, you know, being like, oh God, that's not very interesting. But <laughs> obviously I loved the sound of it so much that I, I continued. Yeah, who were your teachers at that time? So that, at that time, uh, the teacher was Warren Wyrick, who was, uh, so I'm a, essentially a product of our uh, public school system. He, he was the uh, elementary school teacher, um, string teacher for uh, Spackenkill. Uh, no, no, that, that was my high school. Um, shoot, I can't remember my, my elementary school. Um, Hagen Elementary School in, in Poughkeepsie. Um, and my brother, who was two years older, he was playing violin. Um, and so I wanted to play violin, um, like to copy him, you know, and, and, the, and Warren said, well, you know, we need cellos in the orchestra. What do you think about cello? Mm. And so I thought, I thought it over for, for a bit. And, and then as fate would have it, his son, Peter, um, who was already at the Juilliard School. He, Peter, I think, is four or five years older than me. Um, he played a recital in the elementary school and I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's my instrument. So. Very nice. And you and your brother, did you ever play uh, duets together or anything like that? Mm, we, we rarely, but we, we kind of did. Um, it, again, like, you know, my childhood, I don't remember all that much, but, um, at, at, but my mom, likes to tell the story that I would criticize my brother. This is actually before I started playing cello. I would sit there and watch him play the violin. And then I tell him, no, that's out of tune or, you know, <laughs> so I think my brother that kind of turned him off to violin after a while. Sure, a little tough love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think he's, I think he's paid it back many times over the years. <laughs> Now, did your parents have a musical upbringing as well? No, no, my, uh, neither one of my parents um, played played an instrument. Um, my dad wanted to. Um, he 
he well he didn't want to play an instrument per se but he wanted to be in music he wanted to sing um he he i think he did if I recall he did sing, sing in the glee club when he was in college um but um you know he wanted to pursue that professionally and that he was not afforded that opportunity uh in china uh, mainland china so um so if we come to this album that's essentially why um i titled it cantabile and uh just the genesis of this album it started with um the tchaikovsky rococo variations was recorded actually um at the same time as my first album with the royal scottish national orchestra um that was going to be um along with the dvorak and Inescu concertos and then when we, when the producer put everything together, it's like, uh, beyond this is not going to fit. <laughs> We're going to have to leave one of the pieces out. And so um, Tchaikovsky was left out. Uh, and so then, hence, uh, I had to then uh, figure out what to program around it. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, the Tchaikovsky is, is an album that, I, I mean, a, a, a piece that is not only virtuosic, but obviously brings out the singing qualities of, of the cello. Uh, I mean, we think of Tchaikovsky, we think of greatest some of the greatest melodies ever written. Um, so, so I pivoted and I thought, well, you know, I've always wanted to dedicate an album to my father. And um, so that, that's, that was the beginning, you know, so from, from the Tchaikovsky, I added the, Sch the Schumann concerto. Um, and then I thought, well, the Schumann, that's the, the really the, ends up being the biggest piece on the on the album. So I thought, well, let's flank it with another Tchaikovsky piece and then let's flank it with some other pieces. And so that ended up being the Casals, Song of the Song of the Birds. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up. I did want to ask about that artistic arc that you create in the album with mm -hmm. the Schumann being in the center and then Tchaikovsky and then two different arrangements of the Casals. Right. So right. tell us more about that bird of the songs and why you had the orchestral version and then the cello solo. Yeah, yeah. And and look, I mean, the, this whole idea of like this arc, I mean, this is kind of, um, I guess, shows my age because, you know, I grew up with the LP generation, you know, where you, you know, you'd sit down and you listen to the whole album and you'd be looking at the album art and all this um, and you listen from beginning to end. Um, and so... I, I, you know, and of course today everything is the, the tension span is shorter and shorter, but I, I wanted to have something that would not only, if okay, you could take one movement, but, and listen to that or one piece, short piece, but I wanted something that fit, fit along a lot larger arc. Um, so, you know, going from, um, well, okay, so I should probably back up a minute. Um, the, the Tchaikovsky, um, also kind of has meaning to me direct well there's like a direct correlation to my dad because growing up he would always um as i was learning the rococo variations he said well you're gonna have to go into the Tchaikovsky competition with this piece <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough i did right so um so that there's that kind of direct correlation to my dad uh, and so when i started thinking about but other pieces that my dad loved, I've started thinking about Casals. He loved Casals um, probably more than any other cellist. Um, as I did would later, um, he would become one of my heroes. Um, uh, so um, it seemed fitting to take this piece of Casals. Um, and, you know, it's, I'm always trying to find things that I can play by myself and I've heard other versions of the Song of the Birds done um, solo, and I thought, well, let me make my own version. And so we'll start with the the original, which with string orchestra, but then I'll end by myself, you know, as though it's just me singing to my dad. Mm, it's so <laughs> personal and beautiful. I'm wondering, since we are celebrating your father right now, um, I was exploring your website a little bit and um, came across the fact that in your free time, you help run the Paul J. Tsang Foundation. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, it's it's a very modest uh, um, organization, uh, primarily funded by my mother and, and, and um, 
uh, her her bank account, <laughs> and it was a way to to pay homage to my dad. You know the things that he cherished. Uh, of course, he was in the sciences, but he, he loved the arts and wanted to support uh, me and my brother any way in which he could. Um, for example, I mean when when I was um, studying at the Juilliard Pre College, uh, there was one year in which. Um, he was on sabbatical at uh, MIT. And so he would be in Massachusetts during the week. He'd drive back on Friday night, um, take me to Juilliard's at eight. Well, we had to get there by 8.30 in the morning. Um, so we'd leave like 6.30 in the morning, um, get back um, sometimes rehearsals would go all the way until 8 30 p.m and then we get back by 11 at night um and then he'd stay and have like lunch with us and then he'd head back to boston so you know it was it it um it was this dedication to to facilitating um my and my brother's dreams um we wanted to Start a start a foundation that would try to do something similar, you know. So people, um, they 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 have a financial hurdle, you know, when they're in, in reaching their dream. So they can reach out to us, and we'll see okay. what we can do. Yeah. And what's the easiest way for them to do that? Do they just contact you through the website? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Well, turning our attention back to the album for just a, a minute or two here again, what was it like to work with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra? Oh, they're a great band. <laughs> <laughs> they're really great. I mean, um, you go in there and you haven't rehearsed, right? Um, I mean, typically you go play when you're playing um, uh, with an orchestra, you have at least one rehearsal, um, hopefully two with, with the orchestra before the first concert well um for these sessions there was no rehearsal you show up and okay so um thinking back to the last album um uh, Dvorak they're you know they're gonna they'll have played that but the UNESCO they I don't know if, if any of them had ever even seen that music before and you're not having to you know adjust to, uh, and, and they're not having to do things over th 10 times over you know um pretty much from the first first reading it's like wow <laughs> so, that's incredible <laughs> yes it's a great band now of course it also helps you know scott scott's an amazing conductor and you know uh, I, i've seen his process you know his um he He's very meticulous with, you know, he with the parts that that he makes and he sends those to the orchestra well in advance. And so um, that that I'm sure helps too. Absolutely. Are there any other program notes or personal reflections that you'd like to share with our listeners that you feel like might enhance the listening experience? Um, well, I would say um, that listeners should watch Scott's show. Now hear this. Um, the Schumann is featured on the second episode of this season, um, and it talks about, um, I mean, so of course it'll uh, 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 put a nice frame around um, his life and, and the, the struggles that he dealt with um, mentally, and, and then you'll discover what we thought about as we were making this this album so i think that that would be very helpful excellent well beyond saying we look forward to exploring more of your music especially cantabile and listening to that show to get some more insight on it too uh, thank you again for taking these few minutes for classical conversations thank you thank you for having me <laughs>